So as you can see, I'm um, in the very final stage of finishing my drawing. And I've inked it all in, except for I'm finishing up this um, circular pattern that, you know, is going through all the cells. I realized, you see how he's, he's dribbling the ball. So he, he, his arm's up here, ready to throw it down. And then it goes to here, where he throws his arm down. The ball would be about here. Then it goes to another moment in time, which is where the, over here where the ball is by his feet. And I realized before I started inking it in that I made this too small to really capture the movement like this. So I was like, how can I ink this in in a way that brings more emphasis to this part of this cell? And obviously I came up with the idea of doing concentric rings around it, sort of like waves created by, um, created by the ball or whatever. Um, and it looks good. I'm just finishing that right now. So knock on wood that I'm able to execute it. Um, and the whole thing's turning out well, knock on wood. I made the, the tip of his, his hair is darker towards the back of his head and um, slowly gets lighter as it gets thinner and starts to reach his skull. So maybe I'll bring this darkness a little bit forward. Um, but this might, I might be able to finish this today. I work the weekend again, which I do every month. So I have time today on Monday to finish it all up. And there it is. I didn't want to film it until I got this point. It's hit the point. I already tried to film inking it in, and quite frankly, I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to jinx it in any way. Um, I messed up. I was working on a copy of this before I messed it up. So, in my paranoid mind, I thought maybe it was related to filming it as if it was already a done deal which it never is even now I have to be very careful because I don't want the dots on these rings they shouldn't be too close together um, I want the feeling of these rings to come across but I don't want them to um, be too strong with the dots too close together where you lose a sort of ambient atmosphere and the rings bring too much attention to themselves. Um, so what I have to do is you see how the space between the rings needs to be slightly wider than the dots on the rings themselves for the rings to stand out. Uh, but I don't want it to be overly so. So I have to get it. I have to get the dots between the rings just slightly wider than the width between the rings. I'm using this giant pen to do this part. This these are great pens, by the way, and they're pigment ink. I was actually at a um, comic book sort of convention in uh, Leslie College the other week, and um, I got an inking tutorial from Jim Woodring who is, does the Book of Frank, you know, and he is brilliant, I love that guy, and I can't believe I got to meet him in person, um, and he's such a warm, very, very intelligent, he actually won the Genius Award, I didn't realize, but I, I have the Book of Frank, I'm reading it now, it's a very surreal, um, wordless comic book with beautiful black and white, and, um, with, and with this character, this cat character called Frank, sort of based on Crazy Cat, I would say, a little bit. I'll talk about that later, but anyway, during this inking tutorial, um, we got to sort of see him use a fountain pen. And um, I use a fountain pen myself. And I really like the fountain, the fountain pen I was using, which had a really fine tip. Problem is, I've tried fountain pens in the past, and you just, I didn't, I never had real control with them. They'd sort of slide all over the place. Too much ink would come out. 
Um, but whatever reason, this is better. That's a very fine tip and it would really scratch into the paper so you got real um, traction and, um, and a lot more control. And so if I want to explore a little more with color, um, using a fountain pen in the future would be a really good way to do it because I could just buy whatever color inks I want. Whereas if you're buying markers like this, you're sort of stuck with the pigments that are available to you. And it's not a very wide range of colors. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know how much I get into color anyway. I don't really like color that much. If I ever use it, it would be very light. Um, light and sort of nuanced, but but yeah, anyway. So that's it, I'm at the final stage. I'm listening to Ethan Van Skyber, leader of Comics Gate. And um, there's a crowdfunding campaign going on to sue Mark Wade. Um, and um, which I am in support of because Mark Wade um, broke the law and um, interfered with um, with your boy Zach in his publishing deal with Antarctic Press, and you could go read all, li listen all about that. Um, and that's really all I have to say about that. I've got my day off. I'm going out a little bit. I'll be back. Hopefully I'm going to finish up this masterpiece. Um, one thing. I've got like about a million I've got about not a million. I've got about six drawings set up already that I've been I don't want to get overly dramatic, but sort of obsessively working out um, on my computer. Let's see. And um, and I'd say, so I showed the one I'm going to work with, I'm going to do after this current one, which is just three cells. Um of this of this guy moving forward but I got this one too which is gonna be the one after that this is fully formed and I think it's gonna be uh, another masterpiece another shirt masterpiece this was during the summer this kid and another kid came to the court and um, they were putting their bags out and they started shooting around. I left before they started playing in any game. They're with this guy. I don't know who he was. This guy, I'm not showing his full body. And he was pointing at this kid where to put his backpack. And this kid just had the greatest expression on his face. And uh, I got, he had several expressions. So I went through about 50 or more iterations on this kid putting down this backpack before I got to this. Where, and there's so much good material to work with. That's the hardest thing, when you have so much good material to work with. Um, it can be very, very hard to get the perfect drawing. A lot of them were just straight three cells. One of them was, um, I, I, I could show you later, but, um, one of them was just, you know, he has his arm like this, and he didn't have the shadow, he just had... He, he, he's pointing, so I had his... Ah, fuck, I can't explain, it's too much work. But anyway, I've got so many things planned out. The problem is deciding which ones... Um, the order which I'm going to do them, and they're all going to change by the time I get to any of them. This is me starting to play around... With the gazelle shooting, this is a guy, this is a, what I call this guy, it's a perfect form. This I just came up with, it took me like one minute, I put this together. So, I don't know, this might change, I like it, it's very straightforward. Um, you can see it's within a perfect square, so from a distance it'll just look like a perfect square divided in two. 
um, but up close you could see his perfect form. And this guy, this guy is great. I love the fat guy, in particular. And I spent, I spent even more time on this fucking fat guy trying to figure him out, because um, he has this perfect picture. Um, with this guy, they're waiting for the gazelle to possibly pass on the ball, and they have all these great expressions, and they're moving in the his he's this fat guy's moving his arm all over the place, at asking for the ball to be passed to him, and I went through about a million iterations of trying to figure this out. It's like this is a real weak one. Let me I, I could show my weak ones too. Why not? This is all, everything, including my current drawing, is all from the same one game. Um, I had this, this is sort of weird. This guy slowly moves into this game, you can see he puts his arm into this guy's arm. I thought that was sort of cool. And I was experimenting with a bunch of different things to do after that. This was a weird compromise. I thought it would be sort of weird and surreal if he put his arm out here from a different shot. They didn't quite go together. But ultimately, I don't really like it. I thought it'd be easy because it's a take a short amount of time to do it. This is much stronger, and I thought I could do it like this. These two guys, and you know, I love the curve, the curve of the ball like that. Uh, but again, it's just too much information, and. Um, yeah, I don't know if I really like it. Um, it's just a very, it's too, nothing poetic about it. It's just guys looking for the ball. Um, it's going to sound pretentious. I was watching a Kira Kurosawa movie recently, um, and I was realized, watching Seven Samurai, I was realizing that the strength of his movies and his, and his filming is that he just has very, very strong characters and he lets them speak for themselves and he doesn't get too flashy with his editing or his filming. He just lets a he gets very interesting characters and back scenes and lets the care rest on them. Anyway, I gotta go. This might be what I'm gonna do actually. So I can't really talk about it because I'm running out of time. All right.